Most people are using their to-do list, if they even have one, entirely incorrectly. This video will show you the rules and philosophies that I follow when using my to-do list. What is up, YouTube? My name is Aiden Halfon. I am a freshman Cornell University student who makes videos on life advice as well as learning and fitness. Today, we're going to be delving back into the world of time management and exploring the to-do list. Many people have started the rudimentary step but fail to utilize the true power of a to-do list. I will first go over the differences in a to-do list and calendar as they are often really easy to mix up. Then I will talk about the philosophy of scheduling in your to-do list and how to organize by projects. Finally, I will discuss the usefulness of adding a nighttime ritual to your to-do list to set yourself up for a fantastic morning. The difference between a to-do list and calendar. Many people mix up their calendar with their to-do list, even though they're entirely different entities. If you haven't seen my video on using Google Calendar effectively, check it out as it goes more into depth on what calendars are used for. Calendars should be used for all essential day-specific and time-specific actions or events. When I say essential, I mean essential. The issue that many people fall across is they put absolutely everything or too little in their calendar. They stuff it so full of tasks and events that they stop doing every single thing that they even put down. That or they leave it more barren than my clothing wardrobe and put one thing down for each day. As soon as you stop trusting that something in your calendar will get done, it loses its power. This is why you should only put down your most important tasks. Your calendar is your be all end all. I have a saying here at Cornell, if it's in my calendar, it gets done. On the other hand, your to-do list should be used for the general tasks you have to get done throughout the day. These can be your less essential day-specific tasks or other tasks that you would like done at some point. The important thing is that you capture every task or event you have for a day in your calendar or to-do list. Every single one. Like said before, your brain will only allow you to think solely on the task you're doing if it trusts that you will remind yourself of the tons of other stuff you have to do in some way. The most considerable productivity plus that comes with having a calendar and to-do list is it allows you to stop thinking about everything you have to do in a day. When I say everything, I mean everything. If I have to pick up some mail at the local community center, it's going in my to-do list. If I schedule a meeting time for one of my clubs, it's going in my calendar. This might seem over the top, but it truly isn't. The interesting thing about the brain, it doesn't differentiate between the importance of tasks when making you think about them. You can get caught thinking about some small task just as much as you can a larger one. That's right, if you aren't careful, Cleaning the dishes could become the sole thing on your mind just as much as studying for your next big exam well. The philosophy of scheduling in your to-do list. Once you have captured every one of your tasks on your to-do list, you need to have a prioritization system. Most to-do list apps allow you to do this in some capacity. Of course, you can honestly use any app that works for you, but I have found that Todoist fills all of my needs perfectly while having an elegant and easy to use interface. In my opinion, you should prioritize tasks on when you can do them in the day. By scheduling in this way, you won't have to worry about things that you can't do in a specific context. Tasks that should get done in the morning should be put as the number one priority on your to-do list. Then you can decide what order you would like to do your other tasks as reasonably as possible. Of course, there will be times that you need to be flexible and plans will change. Your schedule isn't some set in stone system. It's simply a plan to follow in the ideal scenario. 
Here is my to-do list. You can see that my number one task right now is to edit this YouTube video. How cute. Then my other tasks I will be doing after this are below. Remember that you don't have to be perfect in this step. You can always switch around tasks or change them later at some other point if you didn't schedule them correctly. As said earlier, the context in which you do specific tasks is super important to schedule them in your to-do list. If you have a task that can only get done while in the office, it might even prove helpful to have a separate paper to-do list that you can only use when you're in that setting. This will free up space and cluttering in your main digital or physical to-do list. How to organize with projects. Now, I hear what you're saying. What if you have something that requires more than one action to take? How do I organize my smaller actions into a greater context? The answer is you create a project list. This is an idea brought about in the fantastic book, Getting Things Done by David Allen. Getting Things Done is the book that changed my outlook on productivity, and you should check out my affiliate link in the description if you wanna be more serious about time management. Essentially, David Allen defines a project as anything that takes more than one action to complete. Completing work on a group project, for example, or writing an essay over three days. You should create a project for every single relevant thing in your life. Just like I said before, if you don't have a project for everything you're doing, your brain will not trust your system. The logistics behind making a project list will differ depending on which to-do list app you use, but for the most part, it will look something like this. This is my project list. Here I have projects for my nutrition science class and outlines for creating the storytelling mega class that I am excited to announce will be coming out on Skillshare very soon. You can get a free trial of Skillshare by clicking the link down below and checking out my class as well as many other amazing webinars on the platform. I'm not affiliate and they are not sponsoring me. I just really, really genuinely think you all could learn some amazing things by taking courses on the website. The storytelling mega class will go over everything that I know about storytelling. The knowledge that I have racked up over making videos, reading storytelling books like Storyworthy, and participating in the TEDx Cornell group to facilitate great talks through storytelling. Creating a project on your to-do list is simple. First, you name your project and then batch the relevant steps associated with completing it below. Even if you don't know every step associated with completing the project, you should still get down everything you can. Once you have every action down, Schedule the next actual part of that project for a specific day you want it done. You won't be working off your project list. The power of your project list comes instead from giving you a sense of clarity and structure on your plans for the future. Whenever you can't remember what the following steps in your relevant projects are, you can refer to them even if you can't do any of them at the moment. This is where the most critical part of project scheduling and to-do lists in general comes in. For every project you have, you must have a relevant next action associated with it. The next action is exactly like it sounds. It is the next relevant action that you can do for a project or standalone task. Having a next action for every project is powerful because it brings clarity and drive to get things done. I believe that most people don't lack the motivation to do things, but rather the clarity on how to do them. Having a next action for every project brings a sense of immediacy and control to your to-do list. You know the next relevant thing that needs to be done for every single one of your overarching life plans. I can't describe to you the power of doing this. The nighttime ritual. This is another one of my productivity secrets. A nighttime ritual is exactly what it sounds like. At the end of every single day, I have a nighttime ritual that I follow through to set me up for the next morning. If you're into productivity, you will know that the next day starts the previous night. During this ritual, I do all of my journaling and planning for the following day. I schedule and prioritize my tasks and fill up my calendar and even check the weather for tomorrow. By doing this the night beforehand, I set up my morning self for a fantastic day tomorrow. 
Most people don't have the most energy when they get up in the morning, even if they are morning people. You don't want to force your morning self to go through all the pain and struggle of figuring out what to do with the day first thing after you wake up. Having a nighttime ritual also mitigates the effects of ego depletion. Ego depletion is the slow reduction in self-control over the day that comes about from using your limited willpower reserves. If you don't have a nighttime ritual, you will force your morning self to go through a ton of willpower reducing tasks through decision making. This could in turn cause you to eat that extra cupcake at lunch or skip out on your gym workout later that day. I haven't met one other person at Cornell who I know does some ritual like this and it really does show. I wake up in the morning with a sense of drive and purpose. I don't have to think about what to do with my day, but instead can just get started. You can do the same. All right, we have talked over how to improve your to-do list for maximum productivity. If you thought this video was helpful, be sure to check out my video on using Google Calendar, as well as how to stop procrastinating and stay motivated. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. And as always, bye bye